Please respect my request. It's a respectable request. Listen. In 1994, I had a Toyota 4Runner. Please, man. I ain't up here to work. I'm up here to talk. I'm up here to talk. In 1994, I bought a fucking Toyota 4Runner. It was a 1991 Toyota 4Runner. It had 162,000 miles on it. Let me talk. I paid $15,000 for the car. No hard money. Let me finish telling my story. Listen. When I bought the car, I was excited. I took a drive back to Brooklyn. I went to Fulton Avenue. And fat push, nigga. I parked my car at a fucking meter. I put no money in the meter. I got out my car. I did not have security guard budget. I walked by myself from Flatbush and fucking Fulton. About four blocks down, you know what I saw in front of a record store? Let me tell you what I saw. I saw a little fucking thing that had like a triangle shape standing in front of the store. It was like this little thing. On both sides of the thing, it had a poster on it. I looked at the poster real good. I saw a picture. The picture meant a lot to me. That picture meant a lot to me because I was a fan, a real big fucking fan of those niggas that was on the picture. I saw one nigga like this. Don't, 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 don't scratch nothing. Shh. I'm talking. New York, I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm talking, New York. Shh. Please, man. Please. This shit is real. I'm wearing my emotions on my sleeve. I'm not making up a story because I drink a lot. I'm not in here to sell y'all a performance. I'm telling you the truth. Please listen to me. Please. All right, look. So, they had one nigga pose like this. The other nigga was behind another nigga. Like this. Two niggas on a poster. On the type of the motherfucking poster. I ain't even gonna read it to you. But, I went in the store, right? And when I went in the store, you know, I'm already an artist on a label at this time, so I'm feeling like, why didn't I think of this genius shit that these niggas did with their packaging? I went and said I bought the cassette. The cassette looked like heroin. It was purple. I said it was fucking purple, New York. I said it was purple, New York. And I'm not talking about Prince shit. All due respect to Prince, nigga. But this is hip hop. When I bought the purple cassette tape, I took it in my car. And what amazed me most about it was the intro. The intro, it had niggas sniffing coke. It had niggas sniffing coke on the fucking intro. At that time in hip hop, we didn't think that that was cool. But them niggas did not give a fuck about what you thought was cool. They said, fuck the rules. We gonna come in here and we gonna school you niggas to some things about real life. I appreciate you listening to my story. Cause that was a moment that defined what I ended up becoming as an artist, my motherfucking self. You hear me? When I heard that album, I was scared of them niggas. I'm not even gonna lie. I thought them niggas was crazy, dude. But 
Girl, when I tell you something, I mean it so genuinely. Them niggas created a dialect that was so intricate, a slang talk that was so fly and sexy and gangster and fog at the bosses at the same time. There ain't another nigga in here. And let me just say this real quick, man. 